it amazes me that something as insignificant and small as a dime could change someone's life. So when I was a child, my dad was very abusive, being told that as siblings, we were not worth one thin dime. He went out of his way to try to prove that to us. When he would come home drunk, even if we were in bed, he would drag us out of bed, line us up against the wall and take his pistol and just put it right in our face. And say, you little SOB, I hate you, you're running my life, I'm gonna kill you first. And again, repeated, we weren't worth one thin dime and a waste of his time. Soon after that, as a family, we were swimming out in Sayo and my brother drowned. My mom was drying me off, had her back to the water. My brother, who loved the water so much, got in this little current and it sucked him out. That was the last beating I remember getting from my dad because he blamed me since she couldn't watch my brother David. You know, I'd see kids at school. I don't know, I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to be around the happiness in those kids. After my brother drowned, of course, being blamed for that, I carried this kind of a weight that not only was I worthless, I kind of almost like I was a murderer or something, you know, like I had actually killed my brother. When you're a child and you're being told by a parent that you're not worth one thin dime, it can destroy your life if you let it. My first job was at a restaurant as a busser, and I met Kevin, who was a lead line cook. Then one day I'm standing cooking in the restaurant and in walks this young lady with a weird green beret on. And we developed a friendship. And shortly thereafter, we got together. He was a little crazy, made me laugh a lot. He started coming to church with me. I figured that would be the end of that relationship, but he kept coming and we decided to get married. And it was a very whirlwind romance. She actually made me feel like I was worth something. We were, had a pretty good life. We'd been together five years, and I kind of had my head buried elsewhere and made some bad choices. It was really hard for me to be cast aside, especially with a, a little baby who was just barely two years old. And so I basically threw her out with the bathwater. I was carrying the burden of all the past trying to figure out who I was. Before we separated, I had purchased this van. There were times where she would have things to do or I'd need to take the kids to an appointment and I would take her car, she'd take the van. And on this one particular day, she used the van, I picked it up. The next morning, I'd go out and i turn the radio on and it's on Caleb and that wasn't the rock and roll I always listened to. So I start pushing the buttons and it wouldn't come off of K-Love. He called me up and he was yelling at me, how dare I touch his radio? I was cussing mad. All I did was turn the knob off. And I told her, well, you had no right to put it on that blankety blank station. Didn't push any buttons, I didn't try to change the station. I'm banging on the dash and I'm hitting it and it will not get off of K-Love. Nothing he could do, push those buttons, turn that dial, nothing would work. Well, and this went on day after day after day that I'm having to listen to either Caleb or nothing. I finally gave in and started listening because I got tired of hearing myself sing. The Caleb songs came on and the different people were talking. After, you know, five, 10 minutes of listening to the music, you know, all of a sudden I'd start relaxing and I'd feel really blessed by it. Slowly, I kind of felt it was changing my life a little bit. When you get your mind right, you get your heart right and I realized she wasn't the enemy, I was. K-Love Radio was putting out the truth. I was letting my dad, who had been dead for many years, influence who I was. <laughs> you know, they say the truth can set you free, and it made me a believer that there was hope. And then one day it just hit me in the face, like, I am not where I need to be. I need to be home. I need to be back with my wife. When he came back, he was amazed that hands were outreached and shakes and hugs and that he was welcomed. His sins didn't define him and that he had value. 
he finally told me about the story of how his father would treat him. To hear his story about being told he wasn't worth one thin dime broke my heart, but it also healed it in many ways. A while later, the van broke down, decided we were just gonna have it hauled off. But before I did, I said, you know what? I'm gonna figure out what's going on with that radio. And I took it out and I start pushing the buttons and I tip the thing towards me. And all of a sudden this dime slides off to the top of all the buttons in there. The look on his face was crazy town disbelief. I mean, you could have hit me with a sledgehammer and it wouldn't have hit me harder right in the mind and in the heart that, you know, this dime, this thin dime falls out of this radio. And you could see God's love just washing over him. God broke down those barriers that Kevin had harbored. I'm hearing my dad in the background saying, you're not worth one thin dime, but then... God used that one thin dime to bring Kevin to him. To think that God would use a radio station like Caleb to make that difference was just mind-blowing. Every day when I get ready for work, ever since then, I always reach in my pocket to make sure I have a dime in there because I can always, you know, if things are going bad, I'm having a rough day, I can reach in and fill that dime. And it just brings back, you know, God is saying, yes, you are. You're not only worth a thin dime, you're worth everything.